Hello and welcome to part 4 in our run through of Focus Pro. Let's begin straight away by having a look at the employee details for an individual employee. So just right click on here, go to employee details and the screen comes up. So under the contact tab we can see various parameters here, uh, person's name, job title, payroll number. We can enter various contact details and this national insurance number. Clicking on group we can select up to five different groups that the person may belong to. Clicking on rules, this is where we can select what working schedule this person belongs to or if they happen to use the rotor, we just select, simply select users rotor. The weekly rule, this is where we, we select the weekly rule which we uh, looked at during part two of our run through. Down here if the person um, wishes to have the uh, hourly rate put against them, which is uh, which can be used for reporting purposes, we can enter this in here. These rate factors are simply multiplier rates, so rate one, basic for example, is time one, rate two, time and a quarter, rate three, time and a third. These references down here refer to exporting data into various payroll packages such as SAGE for example. These reflect the individual pay elements which exist in the various payroll packages. Clicking on holidays we can see here we can add a default number of holiday days entitlement and clicking on the holiday button allows us to uh, adjust individual holiday years so we can uh, add an extra loo day in there. We can uh, subtract a day from here if we wish to for this particular year. We can set a maximum carry carry forward value if we wish to. Under the dates field we can simply enter some uh, dates for reporting purposes, start date, leaving date, date of birth. Under the clock tab if you're using HRX proximity terminals, we can enter a number of parameters here, such as the employee's badge or card number, uh, what you'd like to be displayed on the first line of the display of the clocking terminal when they clock in, uh, the file on muster group, so we can say uh, we can group people in order uh, for reporting purposes when the fire alarm goes off, and uh, we can, if we wish to, we can assign people to access groups, which might uh, control when. Uh, somebody can access a door and which doors they can access for example. If you happen to be using a biometric terminal uh, you won't have these parameters instead there'll be a field up in the top right corner called PIN and that will be the employee's PIN number that they would normally enter. Clicking on memos we can use these fields here to enter some free text so um, it could be anything, it could be um, a skill set that somebody might have, it could be a disciplinary um, anything that we want to um, just record against this employee and perhaps report upon later. And finally the user field. Now in here we can actually define our own user defined fields. Um, let's click on system, system setup and uh, user fields. So we can create a new user field. <laughs> Caught me out there. Let's go back to system setup and create a new user field. Uh, we'll call it, let's call it test. We'll write a little t legend that we'd like that be would like to be against the uh, uh, new field that we're putting in, and we can select various types of uh, different user fields we can um, uh, choose from here. So it could be a text field, a numeric field, a date field, a file which could link to uh, a contract of employment, a picture file for example, or a list where we can add a number of parameters within the list that the user uh, chooses from. So let's just select the text field and click on save. Let's go back to our employee and we can see the new field has appeared here. Okay, Thank you very much indeed. Um, please move on to um, part 5 where we'll be looking at some of the absence reporting. Thank you.